You're listening to the Atlanta Dream Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can give at www.dreamcenterchurch.com, where every dollar helps advance the kingdom of God. We hope that this message edifies and encourages you to do the great things God has called you to do. Hey, today it is Halloween. I preached this sermon about a year ago, not on Halloween, but a little around that time. Uh, And I was actually studying the scriptures. And um, how many of you guys grew up and celebrated Halloween? Anyone here grew up celebrating Halloween? I'm putting my hand down. We did. How many of you guys grew up in church and did harvest festivals? Anyone do harvest festivals? It's like Halloween, but actually, what is the difference? I don't know, but it's close, all right? You do it at church versus in the neighborhood. And then um, how many of you guys did uh, zero anything? You guys turn off the lights and you hit. Did anyone do that? Yeah, a few of you guys. Hey, y'all. Yeah, what's up, y'all? You guys are good people. Uh, no, we're all about that. And I want to talk about Halloween because um, not really Halloween. Actually, I want to talk about witches. And I know it sounds crazy, but I want to talk about witches because I, I was studying the scriptures one time and it just kind of hit me that witches and saints aren't that different. And when I grew up, you know, I used to, we used to do uh, harvest festivals. My dad was a pastor. We'd go in. It was actually fun. Uh, hey, Dad, I need to tell you something. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I was just, I went, huh? It was hot in here, so you unbutton your shirt. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it was, um, we grew up doing harvest festivals, and so like the most we would dress up would be like be a scarecrow, but for the most part, we didn't dress up, and uh, we'd go in, and we'd celebrate um, the harvest. You know, it's fall time. We'd celebrate the harvest, and it was kind of the same idea. You'd play games. You'd get a bunch of candy. You'd leave. You'd dress up, face paint, all that stuff. Now, I remember growing up, though, and as I got older, uh, I was not really into scary things. I, some of you guys love scary movies. Anyone in here love scary movies? It's okay. Some, I, I don't believe all you guys. Some of you guys are obsessed with scary movies. I know that. Uh, in youth ministry, I found out that scary movies are like cartoons, man. It's like you just turn them on when you're bored. I, I didn't get it. Uh, but me, I hate scary movies, guys. Uh, when I was a little bit older, I just saw a clip of Chucky. You guys remember Chucky the Scary Doll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you guys are a little weird, man. You guys are excited. I said that. I saw a clip when I was a kid. I was probably nine years old, and it terrified me, man. I was freaked out. And then I watched a, I watched a movie I shouldn't have watched called The Shining. You guys ever hear of the movie The Shining? Man, that movie freaked me out, okay? I'm telling you, all the way until I was about uh, 33 years old, I was freaked out about that movie. No, I was just, uh, that movie freaked me out when I was a teenager, and we used to live up in this dark, dark mountain. We'd, we'd have our church, and you'd walk through this whole hill to get up to our house, and it was pitch black. And I remember walking up that mountain thinking, thinking, or that hill thinking, there's some kind of evil twin sisters who are out in the woods right now, or there's some kind of doll who's going to try to kill me. And then I remember going to youth group and learning from my youth pastor about witches. And he said, oh yeah, witches. And he gave me these stories and these experiences and things he heard about these people who would go out and they would uh, sacrifice cats. I don't know why they're sacrificing cats, man. They, the witches hate cats or something. And they're sacrificing cats, all this stuff. And I remember having this fear instilled inside of me and being fearful and I, I know I'm not alone because I've talked to so many people who at nighttime, they say when they turn off the light as grown adults, they still run and jump into their bed just because maybe something's going to grab them underneath the bed. Don't even pretend. I know a lot of you guys are still jumping. Fernando. And so I had this idea that uh, the enemy was really actually terrifying. And I'm not really actually going to preach much on that, but I want to give that basis up because I got to hit something about Halloween. I don't think you and I should be afraid or anyone should be afraid of people who walk in the demonic. I just want you to know something. God's already defeated the demonic. And people who walk with him are not scary people. They're just part of the losing team. Can I get an amen on that? And I'm putting that out there really quick because um, I'm going to say something that um, uh, some of you guys might find it a little bit offensive, but on Halloween, since me and my kids are gotten older, my kids gotten older, I do like taking them trick-or-treating, and we haven't been able to go, and my wife, my wife just shook her head at me, she hates it, so this is like a give some, lose some, sometimes we go out and we knock on doors, sometimes we don't, but the reason why we started doing this, and just so you guys know, or the reason why I felt this way is because I started realizing something about Halloween, witches, and all those things, is that those guys have no power, they are just a bunch of empty braggers, the enemy is a bunch of empty braggers who pretend that they're big and scary, but the reality of it, they're not. 
And today, when I was reading the Bible about witches, because I'm a big believer that we should stick to the Bible. Anyone in here believe in stick, we should stick to the Bible? When I read up on witches, I don't find witches like you think witches on Halloween. I find something, truthfully, a lot scarier, a lot more deceiving, and honestly, a lot more next door neighbor. And so we're going to talk about witches and saints today and the difference of them and how similar they are. And honestly, how witches aren't some people out in the woods with a big pointy hat, like up there, and a big cauldron mixing up, you know, little things and putting skeletons in there and doing voodoo. That's not what witches are in the Bible. In fact, what we're going to talk about today when we read about witches, we're going to read that these guys were people who are known to be people of God, people who walked in power, people who were intelligent and smart. And we're going to talk about biblical witches, not Hollywood witches today. You guys cool with that? And so I give you that whole preface in the beginning because I wanted to clear something up. I don't believe that witches from Hollywood are anything except the enemy trying to pretend it's bigger than it really is. Okay, you guys hear me on this? But I also want to tell you guys a little bit about witches and saints today. So this is a little bit of a lesson. If you got your notepad, I want to give you some stories today, and then I'm going to tell you some things about saints. But I'm going to take the first one, Acts chapter 8. This is a great story. Do you guys know there's witches in the Bible? Do you guys know that? Yeah, yeah, two of us. Okay, we the rest of it, we start reading our Bibles a little more. If you have your Bibles, I want you to Acts chapter eight. I'm going to read you a quick story. And I'm going to pull it apart. Is that cool? So Philip, Philip's out here ministering in the city of Samaria, and he preached Christ to them. And this is what uh, Philip was doing. He says, "And the multitudes, with one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits." Crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Could you imagine, guys, if we were having church and like people were just screaming because demonic spirits were coming out of them? Wouldn't that be radical? Like, that would be tight. Some of y'all are like, that wouldn't be radical. I've seen those movies, but it would be awesome, I promise. And it says, and there was great joy in the city. Stop right there for a second. Can you go back to that? And there was great joy in that city. I'm going to tell you a very fast story about just God and the demonics. I want to really nail something else about the demonic, okay? Because I want you guys to hear me. I want us to break away from the idea that the enemy has power, not over us. We are in this sanctuary right here. As a youth pastor, we had about 50 kids that night. And we are praying. And this is what I, I did. I'm going to get on the stage so you guys can see me. I was sitting right here on the edge of the, edge of the stage right here. And I said, guys, we're going to pray. And so all of us kids all got together and we got on our knees and we started praying. I said, Jesus, you know, just be in this place. And I had a young man who had been really messed around with. He's been really, he was actually living a terrible life. I loved him to death. I met him when he was homeless, got him back into his house. And we were still working on him, but he had a lot going on. He didn't fully believe in Jesus. And so we're praying on our knees, and this kid starts doing this. He starts going like this. <laughs> now, when I'm praying, if that happened in here, all y'all be looking at that person like, what the heck is happening over there, right? But I just try to keep my cool. I'm just saying, okay, let it be. I have a big team at the time, about 15 people working with me. One of them was my brother-in-law, AJ. If you ever met AJ, he's a ginormous man, okay? Like, you don't mess with this guy. I want to get to that point in a second. And all of a sudden, this kid, is, he, he, the great kid, I still love this kid to death, starts scratching the floor, and he starts screaming. I'm praying, you know? I'm not praying nothing. I'm not like, oh, holy God. I'm just like, God, just bless this kid tonight. You know, I'm going to keep it simple. So finally, I say, Amen. And every one of those kids who had been with me for about five or six years, I've been doing ministry with these kids, every one of them left the room immediately after prayer. They went outside that door and they watched through that window as the rest of us sat with Chris because Chris was convulsing, spinning all over the floor and going nuts. As we're praying over him, they were out there shaking in their boots. They were terrified. And then AJ, this was actually crazy. This kid, uh, listen, who's like really skinny and weak in here? I need like a, uh, someone who's skinny and weak. Not you, Mario. Come on, man. Don't make me feel bad. <laughs> I'm not going to use you, Mario, like that. Come on. This kid was skinny and frail. And AJ is this ginormous dude. And AJ's holding him like this. And this guy just stands right up, Ugh! screaming. I remember thinking, I remember looking at the kids. The kids were looking at the gloves like, oh, my God, what else going on in there? And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, the enemy has got a hold of these kids. They believe in the movie The Exorcist that the demon is stronger than the children of God, right? And so I'm watching fear enter into these hearts. And this is the thing, though. I've seen it happen in this sanctuary with the adults, too. Someone will be in here, and they'll be screaming because something demonic is happening within them, and fear strikes us. We're afraid. 
And I remember when I, I held that kid and I prayed over him and everything, it, the, the story was, ended up being great. And we sat in the car with the kids and the kids were going, what happened in there? What was that about? Why? That was terrifying. Those kids that want to come to church, they were afraid for weeks to go back into prayer. They were afraid that if we prayed, something would happen again. And I'm saying this story to you because I think there's something that this scripture is saying, and there was great joy in that study that oftentimes we miss because the enemy has our ear and our eyes. There was joy in that city because they saw the enemy defeated. And the enemy didn't have anyone's attention saying, I'm stronger than you. It says that they screamed out loud because the demons were coming out of them, and the joy filled that city. I'm saying this to you guys because I want to nail this out. I need you or I want you to be set free from the idea that the enemy is stronger than you. And I'm talking about the demonic. I'm talking about the things that scare you. I'm talking about the fear, the things that you go, oh, I don't mess with that. I want to tell you something. Paul said it. He said, you could eat meat that's even sacrificed to idols. He says, there is no other God. He says, don't do it for your conscience sake. He makes it clear. There's no other God. Remember that. Continue the scripture. It says this. That was just a side note. The enemy is defeated. But there was a certain man called Simon, everyone say Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Stop right there. This man's going around doing sorceries. He's out there doing witchcraft. And this is what the people say. Man, he is a great power of God. This man is the manifest of Jesus. This is the manifest of God himself right here on this earth. But we just read he was a sorcerer or a witch. Verse 11 says this. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Check this out. Then Simon, that sorcerer himself, also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracle and the signs which were done. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this, your wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven by you, or forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken may come upon me. This story of the first witch I'm going to point out to you, because I got one more witch to tell you about. This story about this witch is crazy. Because it didn't say there was this guy who was up there, and he was a warlock, right? And he had one white eye and one black eye. Did you guys ever watch Carmen? Uh, you guys remember Carmen? Who's an old school Christian in here? You guys remember Carmen? Remember that song, Witch's Invitation? Do you guys remember that song? The black slick back hair. You guys don't remember that? Man, that was like, you guys didn't grow up at church, y'all. Yeah, that was it, man. And I remember that was like my idea of a witch. And they have like a crow would be living at his house for some reason, you know, and that would be a witch. But this guy, this guy was a witch. And people said, this is the power of God here. This is not a power of a God. This is the power of our God in this place. I don't know if you noticed that scripture. It wasn't a lowercase g. It was Yahweh, our God. And this is the crazy thing about witches and saints Both of them did miracles in that place. It said that the whole place in Samaria said, man, we are astonished. Look at the miracles that the sorcerer could do. He surely is with God. Surely this is the power of God in this place. And then when the disciples showed up, they did the same exact things. Healings happened. Demons were coming out of people. In fact, 
If it wasn't for the baptisms and Simon changing over and, and the Holy Spirit, if, the, if we don't finish that scripture, it almost looked like Simon had competition come into the place. Here's Simon the witch doing miracles. People are amazed by him. They follow him. And then what happens? Two more dudes show up and they do the same miracles, same cool things, astonishing the people. The truth is, they were even saying about the disciples, Philip, these are men of God. Right off the bat, when you look at two people, Josh, can I use you for a second, brother? Come here, man. I'm going to have you stand up here. On the onset, you could tell that me and Josh are, are we're similar in some areas, but the only the areas I like to admit, okay? Those are the only areas that, yeah. He's stronger. He's cooler. He has tattoos all over him. On the outside, though, for the most part, we're pretty much the same person, how we act, how we talk. I should have brought up Micah. Why did I bring you up here? Can I sit you down? Micah, can I use you? You're a lot more like me. Come here, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over here saying that. I'm thinking, no, you know, I need Micah. Come here, man. Get up here, Micah. That shirt, man, fits you great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> What's up, dude? Hey, man. What time is it? Yeah, man. It's good to see you. We should hang out later. Okay. Okay. Me and Micah, for the most part, you, you guys know this. I don't have to tell you. If you know me and Micah, we act identical. We laugh at the same stupid jokes. And if you're hanging out with us, you don't even understand most of our jokes because we don't either, but we think we're so funny, we'll laugh anyways. And if I was to put me and Micah up here, the only difference that you really tell is maybe some age, looks. Yeah, you look good, man. Yeah. Stretchability. But the truth is, the real difference for me and Micah, even though we have the same background, same upbringing, same parents, same siblings, go to the same church. He worked here for a whole year with me. We worked the same job. Same, not all the same friends, but a lot of the same friends. You know what the real difference is for us? Is our heart. That you can look at us and everything we do, and Micah, I'm just going to pretend that you're not a Christian. Can I do that? I'll, I'll, take the, I'll take it. You're the Christian. I'm not the Christian. Me and Micah could have all the same likelihoods. And if I don't serve the Lord and Micah does serve the Lord, we could do the same things, but they mean different things. And this is what I mean by if I don't serve the Lord and Micah serves the Lord. And he comes in and he sings a worship song in this church. And I come in here and sing this worship song in this church. He's singing from his heart. I'm just singing a song. He's singing from belief. I'm just singing a song. But anybody could come in here and sing a song. And when I look at the scripture, I'm looking at this witch, I'm looking at these saints, I'm looking at two people who are walking in the same nationality, walking in the same kind of lifestyle, speaking the same kind of language, walking into a place and doing miracles, being known as powerful people of God. But the only difference was one of them was about making, no, I'm sorry, you're the Christian. One of them was about making God known. His heart was set, I gotta glorify the Lord. And the other one was set on, I'm gonna glorify myself. The difference between Simon and Philip was who they're gonna glorify. The difference between the saint and the sorcerer was who they lived for. They could talk the same way. They could preach the same way. They could have a healthy marriage in the same way. They could even sing the same songs. They could go to the same church. But the witch and the saint are differentiated by who they serve. Themselves or God. And it gets even crazier. Thanks, Micah, for being my saint, man. Thank you. Give Micah a hand. Yeah, thank you. It gets even crazier because he decides, I'm going to join this group. Simon does. And he gets saved. He gets baptized. And then something happens in the story, and I, I, I've been wanting this for a long time. I want you guys to know this. I want this for a long time. The disciples come in, and they say, oh, the Holy Spirit hasn't been baptized, hasn't come on anybody yet. And so what they say, they go, and they, they start laying hands on people. When they lay hands, people are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. Things are going nuts, right? I don't know what it looked like then, but you know, you guys have seen church. People jump, they fall, they speak in different languages. All of a sudden, this is happening, and Simon says, man, I got some money. Philip, can I have this power too? And what does Philip say to him? You're wicked. You're wicked. May your money perish with you. 
Your money is not, your success is not, like my friend Kenny just said, your education is not what gets you the gift of the Lord. He says this to Simon, you have neither part nor portion in this matter. And this is why, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this, your wickedness. Listen, I'm not going to spend time on this, but we need to talk about wickedness, church. Not sin. I want to talk about wickedness. We'll have to get to that another time. But here's Simon, a Christian, walking in wickedness. And pray if God, perhaps, the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. And this is what he says to this witch. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. You know what's crazy about the scripture? Is the thing that Simon did that showed the disciples that they were bound by bitterness or by, bound by iniquity and poisoned by bitterness was that he sought after the things of God in the wrong way. He said to him, I see that you are poisoned by bitterness. Can I just talk about poisoned by bitterness? How many of you guys have ever been mad at somebody for a long time? How many of you guys have ever been wronged by someone? Anyone ever been wronged? How many of you guys know somebody who's been wronged by someone? How many of you guys, because I like talking about other people. I know you do too. I don't want you up here confessing in the middle of church. So I'm going to do it this way. How many of you guys know people who carry bitterness? How many of you guys know it's poison to you? It destroys you. It paints even a picture of how you could approach God. Maybe if I give him my money, he will reward me back. Can I say that again? Maybe if I give him my money, he will reward me back. That sounds like someone bound by iniquity, poisoned by bitterness. You see, the witch and the saint weren't much different in that town. Except one was serving Jesus. The other one was serving self. And the one who served himself was poisoned in bitterness and bound by iniquity, had no part or portion in the Holy Spirit, and was wicked. I want to say this about witches. Tonight on Halloween, they're not the ones out in the woods, you know, shaking and baking or whatever. They're not the ones at the Satan church. I want to say this, and I want to say this trying to be nice about those people. But they're literally just rebellious people who hate God, not powerful people who work with Satan. Satan doesn't have the power anymore. Simon, this witch, is the witch you should be aware of. The one who could look just like a saint. Was full of bitterness and iniquity. Who's serving their self-interest over even serving the Lord God. Well, there's another story I got for you. Acts chapter 13. You guys still with me? This water looks like I'm drinking vodka straight out of the bottle. What's up, y'all? It's got to loosen up here. <laughs> now, when they had gone through the island to Pathos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus who was with the proconsul, uh, a Segarus Paulus, an intelligent man. This man, Segarus, called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. He was an intelligent man, and he wanted to hear, what, what is this thing you guys are talking? But the sorcerer, Elymas, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who also was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at that sorcerer and said, Oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. This will be my last example. Now, the second to last example of a sorcerer in the Bible. I got one more after this. Very quick one. You know what I like about this sorcerer? This is the kind of witch that you should be aware of. The kind who wants to pervert the truth. And keep you from the way of, ways of righteousness. People who will tell you not to do things because, well, that might make you a vulnerable person. 
even if it's righteous. Might put you in a bad light if you do that. The kind of people who pervert the truth, and this is a great example, I, I hope, or I should say this is a great example in my own life, because I've done this. How many of you guys have ever perverted the truth so it would fit better for your lifestyle? Anyone ever done that before? I've done that. How many of you guys have ever done that with forgiveness? Forgiveness is a great example of that. Well, I forgive them, but I don't like them. <laughs> And I'm never going to forget it. And I can't talk to them anymore. It's like, well, then what the heck did you do? <laughs> you thought about what they did? I mean, what did you do? What, what is forgiveness? And the Lord says it this way, man. He says, man, if you want forgiveness, he says, you know, pray this prayer. Lord, forgive me as I forgive those around me. Hold me to my own forgiveness with your forgiveness. This witch, or Jesus, he was an intelligent man, and all he was trying to do wasn't trying to cast spells. You know, he wasn't dipping an apple in a cauldron and then giving it to, you know, Saul. That's not what happened. You know what he tried to do? He just tried to prevent the gospel from being preached. That's what witches do. Witches try to keep the gospel and righteousness and you walking in righteousness prevented from happening. You guys know what happened, because the next thing, too, though, I just want you guys to know, and this is great news, witches also get used by God to show his power. Isn't that good news? <laughs> and I got one more for you. This is my last one. Because we're talking about people who look a lot like us. I'm trying to, just so you guys know, my goal is, is to de-Hollywood witches for you. Kind of put them into a biblical prospect. But the last one, he's never called a sorcerer, but he holds everything that they did. And he was actually a man who walked with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He did miracles with Jesus. He was even, check this out, chosen by Jesus. He tells his disciples, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. If you read the scriptures, and this is kind of a cool little point for you if you do leadership, this is very interesting. Before Jesus, people would choose the people they followed. John's doing baptism, I'm going to follow him. He sounds great. But when Jesus showed up, he went around and said, hey, you, you come and follow me. Jesus even chose this one. You guys know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Judas. He was part of the inner circle. He sat with Jesus. He prayed with him. He watched Jesus pray. He was on the boat when the storm happened. But Judas was someone just like those two sorcerers in it for his own self-gain. The treasure, taking the money out as he sat and took care of what was given to the disciples and Jesus for living. Stopping the gospel that Jesus was preaching. He didn't know it. He got used as an example. But it's just like the other witch. And the reason why I bring up Judas in this is because Judas is probably, of everybody in history, the scariest person to me. Not because he puts fear in my heart, but puts fear about who he is, what he might do, but puts fear in my heart that how easy it is to be a Judas or a Simon or a Bar-Jesus. That to be a witch, all it takes isn't to denounce the Lord. It just takes twisting what he says a little bit. To be a witch, it doesn't take me to set out curses. In fact, the disciples do miracles. That's not what makes you a witch. What makes you a witch is that you do it so that you are better off. That's the scary part. The scary part is, is that regardless of circumstances, the saints would keep their eyes on the Lord, but the witches, they would use the circumstances to get the things of themselves. And I think about this. I look at saints and witches in the Bible, and I go, whoa, the line isn't that, there's not a big gap in between those guys. It's a heart issue. It's not a hat and a broomstick. It's intentions. And so when I talk to you today about witches, I talk about Halloween. I talk to you about tonight and as some of you guys will turn off the lights and some of you guys will send your kids out and whatever you may do today. And some of you guys are devout on that. I'm with that. Listen, I'm all about that. I want you to know I support wherever you're going unless you think that Satan should be praised. And I think you're an idiot. That's all, all right? But tonight, don't be thinking about the witches and people who love what the enemy's doing. Pray for the witches 
who think, like Simon, that they're walking with the Lord, but they've missed him. Or like Judas, whose intentions were screwed up. Forget those guys, actually. Can tonight, can we do something even better? Check our own hearts. Oh God, am I using your gospel for my gain? Oh God, am I trying to stop your message from being preached? Maybe not on the onset, maybe I'm not trying to stop pastors, but maybe I'm trying to stop myself. Every time you tell me to preach, I won't do it because I don't want to. Perverting your scriptures to benefit me. God, am I trying to earn your power? That's what Simon, Bar Jesus, and Judas did. But I don't know about you, but I want to be like John. No, I want to be like Paul. I want to be like Stephen. Because this is how the saints went in. The saints did this, man. They came into a town and they would preach the gospel. And if no one heard it, they wouldn't go out and say, oh man, I'm a loser. If people wanted to kill them, they didn't care. Their self-interest was zero. They had one interest. Oh, can I please you, mighty God? I want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. I will go anywhere at any cost. And these guys would go into cities. Paul would go into a city and he would preach the gospel. Not for his gain, but for the sake of Jesus. And at one story, he gets stoned to death. He gets stoned. And listen, stoned, they're not throwing pebbles. They're taking rocks and they're crushing them. That's how they would stone people. And they grab them and they drag them out of the city. And he raises back up. And this is what he does. No, this is what he doesn't do. He doesn't look at that city and go, curses. <laughs> he doesn't go back into that city and say, well, how can I make these people like me? You know what he does? He goes back into that city and says, this isn't about me. I got to preach the gospel because this is what God's called me to do. And it says he went back into the city and started preaching again. Stephen, self-interest at a zero, serving the widows and the orphans food. Gets called up by the, by the Pharisees and he preaches to them and they stone him to death. And instead of getting up and running, you know what he does? He looks up to the Father and he takes upon himself the martyrism for seeking Jesus with joy. Peter and John get whipped and beat and they don't go, oh God, why did this happen? How can I change my circumstances? Rather, they say, I partook with Jesus. This is so good. I'm taking part of the suffering. The difference between a saint and a witch is not how they dress. It's actually just their heart's intent. Can I ask you? Are you walking as a saint today? Are you walking as a saint today? Someone, regardless of circumstances, God, I will serve you all the days of my life. Someone who says, I will preach the gospel wherever I am, in my job, in my workplace, in my public office. I will preach the gospel. It's not about my gain. My gain could die with the witches and the sorcerers. I am yours, God. I want that portion. I want that part of the Holy Spirit. I want to be a part of this. But I lay down my self-interest. I lay down perverting the gospel. And I say, yes, Lord, today I am your saint. In church, I'm going to tell you, he likes to use the saints for his righteousness. He wants to use you. He'll use witches, but only to get glory. He wants to use you, and you're called to be his saint. I can't have everyone stand to your feet because I'm going to close this service. I only have you stand up because I want you to be able to pay attention, not fall asleep, okay? Because I'm going to tell you next to close your eyes. The reason why I'm having you close your eyes because I'm going to pray over you guys. But I want you to be able to kind of just look into your own heart. Can we just take a second? Listen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you you're a witch. I, I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. But I do want to take a second and I want you to examine your heart and ask this question, God, am I serving you for my best interest or because, Father, you are worthy of it all? Am I serving you because of what I can get out of it, God? Or because of what you've already done and who you are? Am I willing to give you my whole life, God? My only parts? 
I want you to be able to ask the question that regardless of circumstances, will you follow him? And when I say follow him, I mean obey him regardless of circumstances. Because that right there, you following after him, loving him, desiring him, obeying him, is going to be the big differentiator from those who are witches, those who are sorcerers, those who are in wickedness. So Father, I pray over everyone today in this room that Jesus, you would draw our hearts to you. That Father, if there's any ways that we've perversed your word, any ways that we've stopped the gospel from being preached fully, any way, Jesus, that we've used you for our own gain, any way that we try to persuade you with our money or our acts or whatever we may try to do to persuade you to empower us, Father, we're going to say, forgive us, God. And Father, we lay down the way of the sorcerer. We lay down the way of the wicked one. And we say, Jesus, we want to be like you, full of righteousness, pure at hearts, and holy. So God, today we pray that our hearts would be correct. And that today, Father, this other thing I need to make clear, that God, we recognize that witches, Father, are not scary people. They're lost, sad, and wicked people. And we pray for them today, that Father, you start drawing the hearts of men and women all around us, our friends, our family people who are screwed up in this world, God. People tonight who celebrate the enemy, we pray for them today. Draw their hearts away from their wickedness and foolishness. And bring them into the light of you, Jesus Christ. We hope that you enjoyed today's sermon. Once again, if you'd like to support this ministry, log on to www.dreamcenterchurch.com to help us advance the kingdom of God. And check us out on the Church Center app and all your favorite social media platforms. Until next time, be blessed and go do the great things God has called you to do.